Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guys. This is episode four of a series on passwords. If you haven't watched the rest of the series, I'll link to it in the description. But essentially, we are learning about passwords and figuring out if one passwords have to be five miles long or if shorter passwords is okay and when it's okay. So that's kind of like one of the reasons why I went down that rabbit hole and I wrote a white paper called Exploring the Password Policy Rabbit Hole in which I have discussed so far common misconceptions about passwords, password entropy and how to calculate it, and also hardware random number generators. But now today we are talking about key derivation functions. Key derivation functions allow us to use passwords or passphrases to generate encryption keys. So we essentially enter in a passphrase and out comes uh, an encryption key or a hash, which are kind of synonyms in this case. So what does an AES 256-bit encryption key looks like? Well, this here is a command line that we can, we can use to generate a 256-bit AES key. That encryption key is extremely secure. It is equivalent to a password of 256 bits of entropy. It is impossible for someone to brute force such a password. It requires computer resources out of this world. Um, now, remembering this is also out of this world. It's completely impossible for most humans to memorize this. That is why we use passwords. But uh, how can we go from a password to a 256-bit uh, encryption key? Well, we can use a cryptographic hash function, which is not a good idea, more on this in a second, such as SHA-256. What that does is it allows us to send a passphrase into it and out will come a hash. So this is very similar to what we just did up here, but we are generating this deterministically from this. What that means is if I run this again, it will always generate the same hash. This is something that we use in the security space to create hashes of files, file systems, things like this, which is great, but then we need a way to sign those and that's where we use GPG, for instance. But that's kind of a topic for another episode. Uh, the thing here is to generate this from the passphrase, it's very fast. So for instance, uh, doing this is pretty much instant in the context of key derivation functions, we like things to be slow. The reason why we like things to be slow is if an attacker is going to attempt to brute force through all possible combinations, well, we want the process to be very slow to make it impractical. So uh, there are many key derivation functions out there. Two that we'll discuss today are uh, PBKDF2, which is essentially password-based key derivation function two. That is what macOS uses to encrypt file systems using FileVault. Um, it is also what one password uses to encrypt uh, password databases. Now, another one that a lot of people love in the open source community is Argon2. So Argon2 is the winner of the password hash competition it has had a significant amount of peer review and has a whole bunch of contributors. Argon2 is a fabulous little piece of software and I'm gonna show you guys kind of how it works. So uh, similarly to what we did here, we can echo, which essentially means pipe this string into Argon2. And we're also setting here a salt, more on this in a second. And when I press enter, it will create a hash, which is the same as a 256-bit encryption key, and it has done that in essentially like one one-hundredth of a second. Uh, that is much slower than using SHA-256, but how much slower? In order to know, let's run a thousand of those in a row. So now I'm running a thousand times, you know, that hash, uh, and it has taken 1.5 seconds. If I run a thousand, using the argon2 defaults which are not necessarily as secure as one would want them uh, to be for more sensitive use cases it will take roughly 15 seconds so that means that we're going from roughly 16 to 1.5 it's you know about 10 times longer so that means that an attacker would have to invest 10 times more time 10 times more compute power in order to brute force a password. So imagine that brute forcing that passphrase 
takes you know a year and a million dollars well now just by using argon 2 as a drop-in replacement this is now 10 years and 10 million dollars so it's a lot more expensive for an attacker to do this now uh, there is a really cool feature part of key derivation functions that is usually called iterations uh, I think in the context of argon 2 it's called time but essentially it is uh, a special feature that will multiply the amount of time it takes to run the hash function so if we essentially run this here and we use 100 instead of 1 uh, now it has taken uh, 0.2 so before we were at 0.02 so it is 10 times longer and if we set that uh, t argument to a thousand that will now take essentially 10 times longer so in this case we're now at a thousand iterations and it has taken 2.3 seconds that means that every attempt a hacker uh, makes to try to brute force that password every single combination will take two seconds so if there are millions or billions of combinations it will take an extremely long amount of time so essentially right now this is pretty secure as key derivation functions go uh, now there are other really interesting features here uh, and by the way yeah before I forget it there's also the salt sun the salt here is what we're seeing here so we're using essentially this OpenSSL command to generate a random you know string that random string is combined with the passphrase and both are used as part of the key derivation function to generate an output and that explains why you know even though we're using exactly the same input here the hash there is not the same as this one it's not the same because we're using a different salt uh, that is pretty cool and by you know while we're at it the encoded version here this here includes both the hash settings and the salt so this here is what you know a developer would store in the database and that is what they would use to compare when we're you know submitting our password logging in for instance um, Argon2 has a whole bunch of other really interesting features. It has, as again, a setting called time that essentially sets the number of iterations. Uh, and it has a memory setting that requires more memory, so more RAM in order to compute a hash. And it has a parallelism, that's a hard word for me, feature. I believe that one, don't, don't quote me on this, I think it requires more parallel uh, threads and that will slow down things. All of those features are designed so to uh, essentially uh, mitigate people or attackers trying to use specialized hardware to brute force passwords faster. So for instance, if you're using a GPU, you usually you don't have access to a lot of memory within the GPU. It's very fast at computing uh, problems, but it's not that fast when it requires a lot of RAM. So Argon2 can be used to add that memory cost uh, and it really helps mitigate you know, ISAACs or specialized pieces of hardware. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Actually, I'm forgetting something. Um, the reason why we use SALT uh, is to mitigate rainbow table attacks. So if, for instance, we were using SHA-256, uh, a specific passphrase will always yield the same 256 key. That's a problem because an attacker could use really strong computers to generate all possible combinations and then create a database where you have all the possible passphrases with all their matching hashes that would be really bad so in order to mitigate that it's always recommended to use a truly random salt and that again is what we did here so i hope that was insightful uh, password hashing functions are fabulous it's something that is used every day you're if you're using a computer you're using one uh, so yeah next episode in next episode we're going to talk about secure elements uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye.